Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, I'm going to show you how we can use a nested loop to draw a grid as well as using a 2D array to color those grid. I made a series on introduction to creative coding and in today's video, we're going to focus on two concepts, nested loop and 2D arrays. I previously made another coding tutorial where I went into the details of how to make a square grid and a circle grid. So if you want a little bit more explanation, you can watch that video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how we can use a nested loop to draw a square grid and then how we can use a 2D array to store color information and use that information to color our grid. Let's start by creating a square grid using a nested loop. So first, let's create three variables, columns, rows and size and i'm going to initialize the size to be 20 and then i'm going to calculate the number of columns and the number of rows based on the width and the height and the size so columns equals to width divided by size and rows is height divided by size 400 divided by 20 is 20 and we're going to have a 20 by 20 grid now we're gonna use a nested for loop to draw the square grid so for let i equals to zero i less than columns right i plus plus for let j equals to zero j less than rows j plus plus then we're going to use the function rect which takes in a total of four arguments the first two are the x and y coordinate of the top left of each of the squares. So it's gonna be i times size, right? Because the first one will start at zero, zero. The second one will be 20 by zero, right? And then so on. j times size, and then the third and the fourth arguments will be the width and the height of the square. Let's try it. Okay, so now we have a grid of 20 by 20. Next, what I want to do is that I want to be able to use a 2D array to store color information. And then I want to use that color information to color each of the squares in the grid. How we want to pull in that data is that we want to use the fill function and the fill function will take in a 2D array and that 2D array, I'm just gonna give two indexes, which is gonna be i and j. And this is just the way that we're gonna pull the color information from that 2D array. But I am going to comment this out first because we have not created the 2D array call C yet. Let's create that 2D array. So first we need to create a variable call C and C is of the type array. And we can do that by writing a square bracket. We cannot do double square brackets. JavaScript doesn't know that. So first we just need to do just one square bracket just to say that, hey, C is of the type array. Within the setup function, what we need to do is that we need to use a nested for loop as well to create that 2D array. So the first loop will have a countdown variable call i, and if i is less than calls, then we add we increment i by one. And before we write another for loop, what we want to do is that we want to create multiple empty arrays. A 2D array is an array within an array. So within the big C array, we want to first create multiple empty arrays inside. And how many do we want to create? We want to create a total of columns, right? So using this for loop, it will go from when i equals to zero to i equals to columns minus one, right? So all we need to do is that within that specific index i, just create an empty array. So let's try printing what c is right now. So print c. So you can see that now c has a total of 20 empty arrays, empty 1D array, right? You can see that it goes from index zero to index 19, but inside the 1D array, there's nothing inside yet. Now we want to put data inside the 20 1D arrays, and the data that we want to put is the color information. We need another for loop. For let j equals to zero, j less than rows, j plus plus. 
right? Inside the 20 columns that we have, 21D array columns, we want to put the information of the colors inside each of the columns. And how many do we want to create? We want to create a total of 20 rows, right? From zero to row minus one. And what we need to do here is that we need to put a C of I and J. So now in each of the squares, we will have color information. And you can use a function called color to do that. You can put in three RGB values. Let's say that we want to do all of the same values and I'm gonna put the color red. So 255, zero, zero. So now if we print it again, You can see that now our 2D arrays has the color RGB of red, right? 255.00. And how many do we have? We have a total of 20 columns by 20 rows. And now if we were to uncomment this fill function, what do you think is going to happen? Ta-da! So now all of our squares have the color red. But we don't want to color all of them to be the same. We want to color them differently. So instead of putting in 255, 0, 0, I want to give it a random color. And we can do that by using a random function. So the random function can actually take in different kinds of arguments. But I want to have the color be between the number 0 to the number 255. We can put in actually just one argument, which is 256. So with random 256, it will pick a number between 0 and 256, but not including 256, meaning that it will pick a color between 0 and 255. So we can do that for all three arguments within the color function. Okay, so now let's run. Ta-da! So now we have a grid of random colors. So now you can see that we can use a nested loop to create a grid, and then we can use a 2D array to store grid information. In this case, we use it to store color information. What if you try to use it to store other types of information, for example, the size of the squares, or you can change it to different types of colors, right? Instead of a random color, you can do it of different shades. Give it a try.